today I want to again talk to your hearts just for a little while about renewing our commitment to God. As I often say, um, 2020 has really done a number on our country. In fact, it's done a number on the globe. And everything has been affected by the pandemic. You've been affected. Your spouse, your jobs, your families. Everything has been affected. Your faith has been affected. I know we don't want to say that. We don't want to call it like that because your faith is supposed to be intact. But we would be out of place to say that your faith hasn't been attacked or been pelted by what has taken place globally. What we see taking place in the church world globally um, has affected all of us. It has affected our walk. It has affected our commitment. It has affected our dedication. It has affected our loyalties. We are affected whether we want to admit it or not. Some have let down the standard because they don't trust the religious world any longer because of the things that they see happening, things that they're hearing about that are taking place among even those who are supposed to be of what I will call higher echelon or spiritual individuals. But here's the one thing that I know is true. The Bible makes it very clear, no matter what goes on around you, no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, he says, let every man be a lie and let God be true. God is consistent. He doesn't change. He doesn't vacillate. He doesn't let down a guard just so this can occur. No, he, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we have to ask God and be honest with ourselves. We are on the brink <clears throat> of the rapture of the church getting ready to take place. And there are a whole lot of things that we have allowed, and I'm saying we, I am included in that we, that we have allowed to get in the way <clears throat> and cloud our view and, and put us in a position where we even sometimes question what we know we have and we weigh it against what is happening before our eyes. But here's the one thing that is, again, constant. God said, not Gabriel, not Michael, God said, let every man be a lie and let him be true. Since there is no shadow of turning in him, he does not vacillate. He does not compromise. He is the sum total of his existence. He is, he is full deity. There is nothing that happens without his say-so. Everything that goes on in your life, in my life, has occurred because he has allowed it to. But he also told us that he would give you the grace to bear the burden. He'd give you the grace to stand underneath the pressure of it. And he has kept us. Hallelujah. And so it is our duty now to, as saints of God, it is, you can get weary in your walk, but you have to have the presence of mind to understand that God has purchased you with his own blood. The Lord Jesus Christ washed you, filled you, drew you, and is keeping you, amen, as you allow him to do so. So no matter what you see on the airways, no matter what you hear on the radio, on see on the television, God 
is still in full control of everything. I believe that what God is doing in this window of time that is left is that he's shaken everything that can be shaken and he's allowing things that are really don't mean him, amen, to be discarded. So what I'm saying to you today, Church of God, it is time for us to renew our commitment, renew our dedication to God. Get back to the place you were when you were consistent and steady when it come down to the things of God. The things of God were always first and a foremost, amen, to many of us, but we have allowed life and its circumstances to cloud our vision, cloud our view. We've allowed circumstances, we've allowed people to get in the way, amen. And then some have even charged God foolishly for something that has gone adverse in their life. Why do we need to renew our covenant or commitment to God? We are commanded to repent of our sins, to come to the Lord with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and to partake of his sacrament. When we renew our covenant in this way, the Lord renews the cleansing effect of our baptism. We are made clean and can always, amen, access him through his spirit. Hallelujah. When God gave you the Holy Ghost and you are water baptized in Jesus' name, that's not a small thing. It is major. You, you, you have now entered into the kingdom of God that cannot be shaken. No matter what is happening, the new birth experience puts you right smack dab in the palm of the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he renews the cleansing effect. Amen. When we got baptized in Jesus' name, amen. Coming to him right now, keeping a heart of repentance is what every child of God should have. Every individual that has been filled with the Holy Spirit, you have to keep a mind and a heart of repentance that is pliable to God so that when God starts to deal with you, you come clean and you come correct. It is imperative that we keep our commitment to him, amen, on the forefront of our mind. My late bishop used to teach us, nothing means more to him than his personal accountability to God. And we should feel the same way. Nothing should be more important to us than our personal commitment and accountability to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is the one who sought you, bought you, and purchased you. What is the meaning of this commitment? It means that we now and always will love our Lord and our neighbors as ourselves. It means our actions will reflect who we are and what we believe. It means that we are everyday saints of God, walking as Christ walked and walking as he would have us to walk. We are living members, read and seen of all men. We are his epistles. We are his hands and his feet. And if anyone is going to see him, they've got to see him in the character that we profess. It's got to be in the character that they see on a daily basis. It has to be the consistency that is made known in our daily lives. On your jobs, people look at you strange and wonder, you know, what is it about you? What is it about uh, how you live and I, I, I watch how you handle trouble. I, I watch how you handle letdown. I watch how you handle turmoil and you never seem to come unglued. That's because of the spirit 
that is on the inside. He has a way if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. And he said for us to be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make our requests known unto God. We are living members who strive to have a total commitment to our Lord because it costs heaven everything just to purchase you. I don't want you to take the blood of Jesus lightly. If it had not been for the blood of God, you and I would still be in our sins. We would still have heavy, heavy hanging over our head. We would still be in the world without God and no hope. And this is why our allegiance to Shamana should be to him and to him alone. Glory to God. Our commitment to him, our commitment to show love, our commitment to showing compassion. We ought to be committed to being graceful because he has showed us so much grace. I, I've, I've gotten to a point in my walk with God I'm being very honest with you. I was very critical. Uh, yeah, I was very critical. Amen. Many of us were very critical. But I found out something that the more you get closer to him, the less critical you find yourself. And you, will, you won't be pointing an accusing finger at anyone. I, I've adopted something that, amen, Bishop Noel Jones used to always say. He still says and that is, you know, you can't blow my head up because I got too many flaws that I know I have. And so, you know, I hear people, oh, you a preacher. Oh, you can do this and you can, oh, you can sing. Oh, you know, all of that really don't mean nothing because I, I mean, I appreciate the compliments, but it don't blow my head up because I know me. And my commitment and my dedication to the Lord Jesus Christ as I fight the good fight of faith and lay hold to eternal life, those things really don't hold a lot of wait because I know that I'm yet swimming I'm trying my best to get through hallelujah amen and you all ought to feel the same way amen you're trying your best to continue to present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and so we fight and we strive to please him ah uh, how do we why is it that we need commitment? Well, Psalms 31, let me run through these because I don't want to run out of time. Psalm 31 says, into your hand, I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Into your hand, I commit my spirit. Lord God, don't let nothing get lodged in my heart. Don't let nothing get lodged in my spirit. Don't let me be mean-spirited and hateful. Lord, I commend my, I, I hand my spirit to you. I commit my ways. I commit my actions and my words and my deeds to you because you know how to keep me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter number four, verse number one. Paul says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. He says, I urge you, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. Now, I love to be his prisoner. I don't want to be nobody else's. I, 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 now listen, I was Satan's prisoner and you were Satan's prisoner as well. And the Bible says that he would not let his prisoners go free. But then the strong man who is Jesus Christ. He bound up, amen, the, the, the strong man, and then he kicked him out, and now he's taking residency on the inside. Glory. <laughs> you ought to get God a hand praise just for that. You all have the can't help it. I have the can't help it. We did what we could. We did what we tried to do. We, <coughs> excuse me. We did what we wanted to do. But here, <coughs> excuse me, Here's the one thing that is true, is that when we heard the voice of God, we heard the word of God, God got a hold to our hearts, got a hold to our minds, and he drew us with cords of love, amen, and we responded to it, and he 
showed us and gave us of himself. But we were a good, we were, we were a prisoner now of righteousness and true holiness. Glory to the Lord. So Paul said, I urge you to walk in a manner, walk in a behavior, walk and live in a certain way worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Glory be to God. God didn't call us, amen, to lasciviousness, amen, and wickedness, and lying, and hate. We were already there. He brought us out of that, amen. That's why he tells us, lie not one to the other, because you ought to tell one another the truth, because the spirit that is in you is truth. Glory to God. Because commitment, God honors commitment. He honors, amen, dedication to him. Amen, glory be to God. There's no way in the world you can be striving to please him and striving to walk right and striving to keep the old man or woman down. Amen, and God not just walk up and give you the victory knowing that you are striving to please him. Glory to God. Because your old man is trying to pull you back into, amen, a prison that he is in charge of. Glory be to God. But God has set us free. You ought to give God some praise for that. Deuteronomy chapter number 7, verse number 9. He says, know therefore that the Lord your God is God. Amen. You got to know that your God is God. The faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Uh, he. He knows us. He know, Beloved listen to me. Don't you let the enemy make you feel. Like God don't care about the circumstance. That is in front of you. He knows it. He knows what's bothering you. He knows you lay in the bed. With your eyes open all night. He knows you're looking at the ceiling. You're probably counting the popcorn, amen, on the ceiling. He knows everything about you. Hallelujah. And you are steady trying to make sure that you stay committed to spiritual things. Hallelujah. Why? Because you are looking for the evacuation of the church. You're looking to please him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous night. Light. Renew yourself. Renew your mind. Go back. You know what? You ain't praying. You don't pray like you used to. You don't fast like you used to. You don't meditate like you once did when you first started walking with God. Huh? Uh, uh, there was a time you was always listening to gospel music. I know I was. Amen. Now I just turn the TV on and turn the radio on and just let it play. Hallelujah. Amen. But here, you, you, you've got to go back to doing those things which promote wholesome living. Hallelujah. You've got to go back to make sure you maintain the apostolic standard that we have been given. You've got to make sure that you testify, amen, about God's mercy and his grace that has been given unto you to those who who are unregenerated because they need what you have. Colossians 3, verse number 23. He says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not to men. Committing yourself to the things that you do, you're doing it as unto the Lord, not unto man. Whether it's ushering, you're ushering as unto the Lord. And not to man. The other day I had gone. I usually uh, keep the plastic bottles. Amen. And I yesterday I had bags that were full. So I took them. Changed them. And I got the money for them. Well as soon as I got the money for them. I heard the spirit of the Lord spoke to me. Concerning a woman. Who was standing next to me. She just talking to herself. And the Lord said give her everything in your hand. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I just gave her the bills. I think it was like $9 and some, some change. I gave her the bills. 
when I got in the car and closed the door, she just said, thank you, sir. Thank you. But here's what got me. The Lord spoke to me and said, you didn't do what I told you. I said, what you mean? I gave her. He said, you didn't give her everything I told you that was in your hand. Ta -ta -ta -bo -sha. Amen. I had thrown the change in the side of the door and with other change. Well, before I knew it, I took all the change out of there. Amen. I got out the car and went back and I gave it all to her. Amen. Listen, God tests your obedience. She was less fortunate than me. I didn't really need it. But God had me there for a reason to be a blessing to her. This is why you, as children of God, you've got to keep an ear to hear. You know God's voice because he said, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. Now, you may not know altogether why God is prompting you to do the things that you're doing. Uh, give this dress to them. Give these clothes to them. Do this and do that. Hey. You're doing this as unto the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Because they are less fortunate than you. I have no problem buying people food. It's food. Amen. Because we belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. So we do it heartily. As for the Lord and not to me. You're not doing it for accolades or for nobody to see you. At least I hope not. But you ought to be doing it to the glory of God. Hallelujah. 1 John 5, verse number 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. His commandments are not grievous. They are not hard. It is not arduous. All he wants you to do is be willing. First Kings chapter number 8, verse 61. He says, let your heart therefore be wholly true to the Lord our God, walking in his statues and keeping his commandments uh, at this day. Do it one day at a time. Don't worry about the next day. If you if you here today, you walk with God for the day. You please God for the day. You watch how you think today. You watch what you say today. You ask God to allow his spirit to direct your thoughts today. The evil of the day is sufficient. Don't worry about tomorrow. Amen. Or, or don't worry about what's coming. Amen. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about yesterday. Yesterday can't be undone. But what you can do is handle what you have today. Proverbs chapter number 16, verse number three. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Will be a step. If you commit your ways to him, I guarantee you, he'll close the door on that business deal that you are asking him about, or he'll open the door, he'll give you access, he'll say, Be still. And remember, no is an answer as well. Psalm 37, verse number five says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust him, and he will act. Commit your way. Acknowledge him in everything you do. I don't care what it is. You may think it's a small thing, but start there. Start with that small thing. Acknowledge him in that way, in that small thing, and then watch him direct your path, and then you'll start building on everything that occurs. You'll start acknowledging him. You'll ask him, you get ready to buy a new car? you say, Lord, what car do you want me to buy? What house do you want? Oh, yes. Because he belongs to you and you belong to him. Commit your ways to him. Trust him and he will act.
Mm. Trust him. That's all he's asking for, is for you to trust him with you. Trust him with your children. Trust him that he will give you the desires of your heart. Trust him to open doors for you. Trust him to close doors that he don't want you to walk through. All he wants you to do is to renew your commitment to him. Rededicate yourself. Rededicate yourself to spiritual things. Lord, I done missed so much church. I'm coming. I'm going to get myself together. It is going to be a priority now. I'm getting my mind together. I'm getting my clothes. I'm going to do like I do when I was a kid. I'm ironing my clothes on Saturday night. Amen. So then they all are laid out and everything is ready for me to get to church on Sunday so I can get there on time because there's something about being in his presence that you need. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. How do I renew my commitment with God? First, sincerely seek Him. Receive His grace. Search your spirit and search your soul very carefully. Consider the covenant relationship that you have with him. Consider the things separating you from your God. He's the lover of your soul. What has gotten in the way? What has clouded the view? Consider whether you desire to remove these things from your life. And consider whether you are sincerely willing to choose to renew your commitment to him. That's turning the searchlight on on yourself. Sometimes the presence of God can be so heavy on you. You don't want to eat. You don't want to talk to nobody. You can't sleep. Huh? Because God is trying to get your attention. He loves you far beyond yourself. Renew your commitment to the things of God, to God. Some of you used to pay tithes and support a work. Now you don't support it all. You don't support anything. Some of you used to commit your ways to him. Now we've gotten to a point where we do whatever we want to do. And God is not even a thought. Yet, when trouble comes, he's the first one that we call. I'm challenging you today. Search your mind. Search your heart. Search your spirit. To thine own self be true. To thine own self be true. And watch what God, commit your ways to him. You young people, commit your ways to him. He'll bless your family. He'll bless your household. He'll bless your jobs. He'll bless you with longevity. Mm. Commit your ways to him and your plans will be established. I've got to quit. Give God a hand of praise. <laughs> ah, glory to God. Amen. If you've never been water baptized in Jesus' name, fill with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit. God, give utterance. You are living beneath your privilege. I know I say that all, I say that all the time, but you are. It is your privilege to come in. Because when he's drawing you, come to him. He will save you just now. Repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in another language as the Spirit of God gives utterance. He does not negotiate what it takes to enter into the kingdom of God. His word doesn't change. And those of you who have entered the kingdom of God by the new birth experience, 
the new and living way. You ought to, as our late late pastor used to say, you ought to be slap, happy, glad, something like that. Something you used to say. You ought to be happy. You ought to be glad. You ought to be ecstatic because it is God that initiated the relationship. Listen, I gotta let y'all go. If you'd like to be an in-person service, our services, amen, are on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at the Doubletree Hotel in the city of Norwalk, 13111 Sycamore Drive in the city of Norwalk. Again, our services begin at 10 a.m., amen, in the ballroom on the floor. Oh, God. You talking about God, God has been stepping in. He's been walking. He's been doing what he does. All you've got to do is invite him in. He wants to come in and sup with you. So if you'd like to be in person service, amen, our service once again begins at 10 a.m. on Sunday. Come on out. We'll be there giving God the glory and the praise because he is great and he is greatly to be praised. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. Continue to pray for us. Continue to keep my wife in prayer as she prepares for a dissertation. Amen. God is good and he's doing just what he said. He's promised what he said he was going to do and he's doing it right before our eyes. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. Continue to pray one for another. Amen. Remember, renew your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and stick to it. It's getting ready to pay off in just a little while. May the Lord bless you. May God strengthen you. If you'd like to donate to the Ecclesia of Christ, amen, Apostolic Church, amen, the information is on the screen. You can do so by cash app. You can do so by writing a check, sending it to the address, amen, uh, the Gmail, all the information is there. I love you. He is a promise keeper, Sister Lydia. Yes, he is. He is a promise keeper. He ain't like us. When he makes a promise, you can put your foot on it because he will show up and that right early. I love you. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. Have a blessed week. Invite somebody out to service. It will do them good to come on out of sin. Come on in the house. It's going to rain. It's going to rain down fire. It's going to rain. Be blessed until we meet.